What's up? I got a bunch of stuff recently, and it's finally all here together so I can get started. Uh, I bought one of the new K-Sport USA uh, Cappuccino ECUs. So it's tunable, customizable, what kind of stuff. It basically starts out as like an N1. Um, I think you can tune it and do all kinds of other stuff to it, so you can kind of have the old N2. Um, as you can see here, it was $800. I got serial number one because I'm super fancy, I guess. And uh, got some spark plugs to go with it because I plan on turning up my boost. They send you, so I got three of these spark plugs. This is a Lambda controller. It's a serial program plug for this thing. Uh, Wideband air fuel sensor. So this is what comes with the K-Sport kit. How it works is K-Sport sends you this board. You're supposed to take it out and put it in your current, like your existing ECU box and I guess you would store your current board safely somewhere if you want to revert to stock one day. So I didn't want to do that. I went and bought myself a ECU box. Uh, I couldn't find an affordable AZ-1 or Cara box, so I found a cheap uh, cappuccino box. So the mountain tab would be a little bit different. I'm considering uh, cutting that off and maybe re-welding it or something. I'll take a look and think about that later. So. I bought this separately from Yahoo Auctions, and then I also found this because I was trying to find a harness, like an old harness, and just snip the ends off and use these plugs to do the rewire thing for our car that the cappuccino has like reversed. So instead of modifying my existing plug, I thought about going the extra mile to get a, uh, uh, a different set of wires where it's kind of like an adapter harness. So. This is a harness extension that you can get from Yahoo Auctions. It's about a hundred bucks, it's kind of pricey, but you know, I, I really wanted to do this. So instead of figuring out how to get a new plug that was nearly unobtainable, I'm surprised this even exists. I'm gonna push the pins out of here and flip them once I figure out exactly what I need to do here. Well, I'm gonna transplant my new board into this box here too. Let's open it up and take a look. There are four Phillips head screws on the side to take your cover off. There it is. It's just a steel box. Um, here is the stock cappuccino board. All right, pretty cool. It's a lot different. Check this out. There's a little uh, drawing of a cappuccino here and a little serial number up top. I bet the bottom of this doesn't have one of those. There are some mounting screws. Remove your mounting screws. Three directly on the board itself. And two on the side here. There you have it. Your board comes out. Put this in a safe place, I guess, if you want to keep it. I don't really, I mean, I don't want to destroy it, but I don't really have a need for this. I'm just gonna put it down for now. So looking at this thing, these tabs are just pinch welded on, two on each one. I think I can drill them out and the plate should come off and then I can just re-weld these tabs onto wherever it needs to go so I can use the bolt mounts again in the car. These tabs were just pinch welded on, I just drilled them out and they just pop right off. I tried to not penetrate the, the bottom of the housing, but my last one, I accidentally, I accidentally went all the way through. Uh, so that's all right, no big deal. Come to the car with a 14 millimeter socket. Your front seat is held in by four nuts and bolts. Um, over here, right behind the carpet, you'll have to remove that. Or if you can finagle it, flipping it up or whatever, you can do that too, but... Um, four 10 millimeter bolts right here. This is where your ECU sits. Behind the panel, you'll find your ECU and you're gonna find this white like plastic harness uh, router thing. Um, you might need to remove this because the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the ECU in is behind it. And plus when you jam the other thing in here, it might not fit. So let's find out. Oh, 
was able to flex it out of the way. Um, press down on the clip, wiggle it out, push down on the second clip, wiggle that out. Okay. So this is my Suzuki Cars ECU. I was talking about replacing the flanges on the other one. Now I'm looking at this one, it's completely different. Uh, I could probably still make it work. Let's go take a look. I've decided to take my stock ECU out of my stock box because the mounting points are different. Uh, it's easier to do it this way. Maybe one day I can come back and re revisit this, but for now, this is what I'm gonna do. Screw it back in. When you put your new case sport ECU into the housing, make sure you don't use these two mounting screws for the case. So let's see, it's like this. So don't use the one when when you're looking at the ECU like this, don't use the one that's over here, and don't use the one that's over here unless you get shorter hardware. Because if you use the original screws, they go in right there, and it goes in right there. And as you can see, let me see if I can get the focus on there. I nicked my little uh, plug there, it got pushed a little bit. Same over here. Really hard to get that to focus, but not a big deal. I didn't break anything. That's why it's kind of important you don't really crank things down. So this is okay. I will probably just leave the screws out because that's simpler. Um, shorter hardware would be fine or just leave them out because two is plenty. You will have two extra screws left over because uh, the case port does not use the two side mounting holes. Keep them, keep them in a safe place in case you ever wanted to revert. So don't lose them. You know what's messed up? I filmed me taking this cappuccino ECU apart the other night. Was it like two days ago, one or two days ago? And that is my car's ECU. I said I didn't want to ruin the cappuccino ECU. Now, the problem is, where did it go? I I don't I don't know what happened to it. I said I was going to keep it in a safe place, and now it's in a safe place where no one can find it, I guess. <laughs> okay. Once you're in here, put a screwdriver or a little pick in here to pull this tab out a little bit so you can flip the door up on both sides. This door is what holds the pins in. And then you go to the front side and if you look right into the hole I don't think I can show this on the camera unfortunately but you'll see the pin with a yellow tab that's right on top of it they make special tools for you to remove pins fairly easily I don't have one of those tools so I'm gonna make do with what I have I took a small medium-sized safety pin and just bent it out like this I figured out uh, that this is tapered enough where it might be able to wedge under the the tab and lift it up to hold it there. It's difficult to do this in here with everything attached. Um, I did it with this thing and it was easy to do because it's not like attached to the car and having me hunched over the door frame, that kind of stuff. So let's get to it. I'm gonna remove one pin just to show you. I'm gonna pick the easiest pin to remove because I'm not gonna be removing my own pins. So I'm gonna use this one right here. I will be slipping the uh, safety pin in, angling it downwards, okay so after some pushing I managed to angle the pin just right and get the safety pin under the uh, latch that holds the pin in. Once the pin is in I'm gonna use a little screwdriver to push the little pin out. You'll feel it when the pin kind of gives out and goes backwards. I'm going to pull this pin out. And as you can see. Look at that. My wire came out. So that's it for me pulling these wires out. I'm going to put this one right back. You'll feel it click into place. And then I'm just going to latch it back together. After you do your pin swap for the cappuccino ECU, there's a few pins to switch out. I'm going to show you which ones. If you're going to use a cappuccino ECU, like I'm using the uh, case port, 
I'm going to have to remove the lowest bottom right one. If you're looking at the pin like this, I'll circle it in the video. So this corner one right here, you got to remove. And the middle one right here, you got to remove. I will also circle that one. So one, two, three, four, five, the sixth one in on both sides and the bottom right one facing the pin like this. So remove the two pins out of here. Just like on the yellow one, you'll pull the tab back and then you're gonna remove the first one on the bottom left and then the third one in. Then from those wires, they go into the yellow plug. You're gonna to have to probably pull back some of this uh, electrical sheathing here and then that way they can reach and plug into where they need to go. I'll show you in a little diagram where they go. I followed Rune's instructions and our, our friend here has nicely drawn out what we need to do on paper, but I'm trying to make a video version of it for you guys, for those visual folks that need some explanation and watching someone do it. As you already know, the reason that I didn't do my pins as expected for you guys, I have, I bought this thing because I didn't want to modify this and I don't want to deal with peeling all this stuff back because I'm extra like that. So I'm just gonna plug this in now because I've already made the modification on this to switch my pins. This clicks right in, this clicks right in, and there I have it. I'm all set. Hopefully this fits in here okay because this thing is literally the size of the ECU. Um, here's the ECU I'm gonna put back. So I'm gonna slip this under there, this in there. So that goes in there. This goes in there. Hey, I think I can make this fit. That'll fit. There we go. That ain't going anywhere. Okay, million dollar question now. Does it work? I probably should have tested before bolting it in, but let's see. Everything seems to be okay. Please don't blow up. That's not good. It wants to start. What is that noise? Huh. Well, I gotta check on that. I ran into a technical difficulty. It's running really poorly and it doesn't seem very happy and there's like a weird ticking in one of my sensors back there. So I'm gonna double check my work here. This is why I wanted to buy the adapter harness dooflicky that I was gonna get and this way, if I had any problems like this, I could easily revert and not have to flip my pins back and forth just to have my stock ECU be able to come back in here. That's it for right now. So I'm gonna revert this back to stock. I guess this is gonna start off uh, my new series here with the ECU and tuning. Then we will get cracking once I get my stuff sorted out and the car actually running on the caseboard ECU. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications for when I update stuff on this, uh, this situation here. I put my stock ECU back in. Let's hope I didn't break anything. That sounds okay.
All right, everything looks okay. Car is still drivable and it runs all right. It runs exactly how I remember it running. So tune in for the next update.